Hey, welcome back to the Positive, Positive Side Podcast. Glad you're tuning in. The host, Jeremy Todd. Um, you know, it's great it's to, to have guests that I know, like, and trust. And I know we talked about this in the last couple episodes, and I know that I haven't done a lot of episodes that I've been wanting to do, but I'm back and better than ever, and I feel good. A couple of things with my life update. Now, we're going to bring my girl Kalua in here in just a second. But I think it's important, and, and we're going to, believe me, I've got the, the perfect post that we're going to tie right into Kalua's interview. Um, but I want to tell everybody, like, kind of what's going on in my life, because that's important. You know, again, being, being you know, 600-some episodes all around the world, you know, hundreds of thousands of episodes downloaded, I think it's important to share my life. And I've always done this. You know, let me backtrack just a second. And, I, you know, it's my podcast. I got the time, right? I shared this on Instagram. If you haven't followed me on Instagram yet, I'm not quite sure what you're waiting for. I really don't understand it, but it doesn't matter because I'm going to share the post with you guys right freaking now. And it, it means so much in my life. And this is why I do what I do. I'm going, I'm scrolling through pictures of all my kids, all that good stuff. Here it comes. Okay, here it goes. Damn it. I went backwards and hit the wrong button. Here it goes. This is the great thing about live Kalua, you, you know, you have to deal with me all the time. So yes. you're used to this madness, it's but no one else times. is. But here is the actual quote. Being our messy and perfect authentic selves helps us create a space where others feel safe to be themselves too. Your vulnerability can be a gift to others. How badass is that? That got shared to me by a friend of mine named Daydrian. I love Daydrian. She lives in California. I met her out there when I was when I lived out there for that brief time. But that quote almost brings tears to my eyes. It made it such a big impact. Like I got it last night. At like actually, I, I I listened to it. I I read it this morning at um, probably four a.m. Haven't been sleeping well. It's the normal thing I do. I reach over to my phone to see if certain people have reached back out to me because I send messages and I'm yearning for this desire to be um, wanting new people in my life. If that co-word for a lot of things. <laughs> but I see this quote and I'm like, man, that is so impactful to where it, it basically describes who I am. Let's read it one more time for the people in the back that didn't hear it. Uh, yes, I'm chewing gum. I'm sorry. Being our messy and perfect authentic selves helps create a space where others feel safe to be themselves too. Your vulnerability can be a gift to others. How badass is that? I think to myself, like, wow, that is, again, me one oh freaking one. Like that is, that's why I do this show. I saw that small quote from somebody, a friend of mine that means dearly to my life, Daydream, what up? Uh, she means a lot to me. She's a friend of mine. I love her to death. And she sends that to me and she knows that that quote is so on point with me. So I think about the show, like maybe I'm not doing enough episodes. I'm not doing as many as I should be. I'm not being as vulnerable as I should be. What's going on in my life? Um, let me take my gum out because it's probably obnoxious to people listening. Um, I bought another house and I'm moving out again uh, from the kids and my ex. But I gave it the best shot I had to try and make it work for the kids. Like now, her and I would have never been together. We had a great run when I was younger. It was great. But it would never, it's never going to work. And um, I knew subconsciously, I knew, I know all levels is not going to work. But now it's so exciting to realize, okay, you give everything you can. You put yourself on front street. You try. And then the best version of yourself sometimes doesn't work out. For them, for her, for the situation that I was in, that's okay. That's totally okay. But the future, um, it's like this whole new future. 
because the future before was a future of um, not that there was ever to be like, okay, if I go back to uh, everyone has multiple futures and sorry, Kalua, I'm going off on a tangent. This is your show and I'm sorry. Um, but there's multiple futures that we all have. And if we go back, let's just go way back in the time machine. The future that I had originally when I get married, life is good. And you've gone through some of this stuff too, Kalua. So I know this will be, this will make sense. The future of my life back then was man, married, have some kids right off in the sunset. That was the future. And then all of a sudden, the future changes. The, the life that you live in, the life that you believe the future is fragments. It's not good. It's not bad. It's indifferent. But if you can picture like, maybe you picture for all the young people out there listening like an like a iPhone and you get a crack in your cell phone and all of a sudden it fragments. There's all kinds of different directions. Your life fragments. My life fragmented. It didn't work out. I knew that. Fragments again. It's like this whole another, it's like you, you drop your phone, it cracks. You drop your phone again, it cracks in another million different pieces, but they're different pieces. It's like you swipe your phone up, now you're getting cut on your finger, a bunch of different angles, and it's not even the same angle. It's just so weird. Uh, but you go back, and like, okay, well, my life is so different. I'm going to try and make it work with my kids. You try it out. I get knowing that the, I keep saying this over and over because it's such an important, important part of the conversation because I know what people say, well, you were going back with your ex. That, that's the relationship, that's a surface level conversation that has nothing to do with it. That was never gonna happen. It was going back for my kids, to live with my kids. Drop it again, more fragments. Like well, now what do I do? Now it's like, it's so weird that I feel like I'm putting this, am I even recording this? I don't even know if I'm recording. Oh, I am recording. You're recording, this. Okay. I see it. All right, good. So <laughs> now I feel like I'm putting this, this fractured disaster. I don't even know what the end result looks like. I don't know and I'm scared and I'm worried about it and I'm intimidated. I'm subconsciously feeling it's gonna fail. But now it's real. Like it is, there's no turning back now. It's me. What if all of those fractures were just opportunities for your growth? They were gifts. And not knowing is part of the mystery. It's part of that, you know, that divine feminine that I'm always talking about, yeah. the unknown. And, you know, it's not comfortable because, you know, you like to plan and you like to know what's coming ahead. I do. But sometimes do. there's just something about anticipation of the unknown the yeah realistic that's probably real that's probably reality but sometimes reality like you like i don't want to accept reality i don't know it's like what uh, about letting go and just having faith that correct. everything is working out the way it's supposed correct. to and that's the scary part and i think that's the right way like i've met someone now that's in my life short term that um, I don't know what's going to happen. Like I'm, I'm, I subconsciously um, sabotage myself because I feel like I need to almost retreat back to what I know is a toxic relationship. Does that make sense? It's bizarre. It's familiar. It's bizarre. It's known. It's the familiar, it's the known. That's why so many people do that because we often do that. Uh, I don't know what's on the other side, but I do know what's here. And at least Correct. I know, and I'm, comfort, I'm comfortable in the knowing. But what? if you have that faith and, and let do. go and go to the other side, it could be so much better. I guess that's where I'm at. Like it's, it's weird. It's really weird because it's like 
the future that I know I deserve is right there. It's right there. But am I worthy of it? Ah, there it is. There it is. You know, if you listen to Abraham Hicks, and I'm sure I'll, I'll totally butcher it, but just that idea of everything you desire when it's in alignment with your expectations, like you expect to have it, then it all comes together, but you can't like clench and, and squeeze the energy and you I'll have believe. to know that you are worthy yeah. just by being here. You don't have yeah. to do anything to prove that you're worthy. Imagine that. Just you breathing makes you worthy. It does. It makes you feel good. Like I, I, I'm truly honest, thank God, about the opportunity of the future. Like it's just, it's just you know, I, I think everybody goes through this. Well, I think they go through it, but they don't. That's why I go back to that quote originally about sharing these experiences about how important they are and how real they are to have that be the superpower of other people that are going through these things that that don't talk about this like it's it's real real shit there's so much shame everybody thinks they're going through it on their own and they're not yeah. we're all connected we all feel for it sure. for each other for sure it's bizarre it's so weird like, I know, like, damn, I'm so, I don't want to cuss. I'm so effing close to having true happiness. But I don't know, it's weird. It's so weird. Anyways, I, can, I you tied make, can you force it to happen? I don't know. What if you had happiness? I, like, in the I, present I almost moment? like to try and force it to happen. What about, what about forgetting about happiness in the future and just focusing on happiness now? It's difficult because Why? you go, because you know, because I mean, you know, because I know your background when you're in the heat mm -hmm. and you're going through the shit, it's easy to say that. However, I would tell you this, I would tell you this, like I, you know, I feel better talking about this stuff, like. I feel better talking about it and being upfront and being real about it. I don't think most people are. I, I don't think me, most people talk about their true thoughts or true feelings about mm -hmm. real life. But man, like I, I was just talking today, like my future is so effing bright in it. Mm -hmm. But yet subconsciously you want to pull yourself back. So if I pull my my guest in after a long, after a long tangent about a bunch of bullshit, but if I pull you back in, Kalua Galakar. Well, I want to not let you off the hook with this just yet. Okay. Because when you keep saying that it's it's there, it's coming, right? It's just out there. You keep pushing it further ahead. Right? Because you're not in that Great energy point. of Great being point. that person in vibration with that future. But if you come back to the present time, because that's all you have is the present time. You don't have right. the yeah, past right. is done. You can't do anything about the future yet, but you can focus on the present and what you focus on grows. So if you're focusing on wanting something in the future, you're, you're attracting more want. But if you're focusing on all of the m amazing things that are happening in your life right now, you've got killer job, right? You've got amazing sure. kids. You've got, sure. you know, you've got great friends. You're like the biggest social butterfly I know, right? <laughs> you've got I a damn good life. And so as you focus on all of those things that makes your life so amazing all the time, you're, you're raising that vibration and you're attracting that what you want right to you, it becomes in alignment with you and it just shows up instead of continuously getting pushed further out. Well, how do you shut off that side? Like, how do you, because it, like, it, it's, it's, you know, it's correction, awareness. Yeah. You got to catch yourself doing it. 
you got to catch yourself doing it and then reframe it in the moment. Like I remember, you know, you know, my story getting out of a really yeah. toxic relationship and, you know, that took a lot of money on my end and I was left with nothing financially. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I would not, sit yeah. there right every, every month, like, Holy crap, how am I going to pay the rent? And I would start scrimping and saving and stressing about it. And I would pull it all together, pay the rent for about a week. I'd be like, phew. And then I'd start again. Oh shit. How's this going to happen now? Right. So for three weeks of every month, I was all stressed out. And finally I said, wait, what am I doing to myself? Every month that happens, why would I torture myself all month long? Why do that to myself? So I said, that's it. I'm going to just live in faith. I know it's coming. I'm expecting it to be here. And not only did it arrive, more showed up and more right? And it became more, but in that initial moment, like I would, could, I would still go back to that habit. It becomes a habit of, oh crap. Oh, oh. And I could catch it. That awareness. Oh no, I'm not thinking that, right? I'm, I reframe it to this and you just catch it and change the thoughts. I agree with that. I agree with That's that. Shocking, because you usually don't agree with me. <laughs> well, well, you're right. I, 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 I agree with that a lot. I, I agree with that. Um, I would also say that there is nothing. I agree. I need to do a better job of realizing the opportunity in my life the way it is, and the re- the opportunity of the future. Like I said, I um, best job ever. I have amazing friends. Um, I have a young lady that I've talked to recently. That um, and not and not recently, whatever, whatever, whatever your definition of recently is that um, has made a big impact. So, but I'm just I, I get scared. I get worried, and, and, and you know I get worried. And this goes back to that unworthiness. Like, am I worthy to have this life with a great job, great relationship that I haven't had? I haven't had a great relationship in maybe my whole life. And then again, it's no disrespect to my ex. There's no disrespect. And I, I mean that from the bottom of my heart. And if I, if I asked her the same situation as she was sitting right here next to me, she would t- say the exact same thing word for word. We've never had a great, great relationship. And it, and that's okay. But we've had these three beautiful children that we've, that we've raised and they're amazing. It's just, you know, at age 43. Um, and and I, that's what I love about this podcast. Because whether you're 53, 23, 33, 83, whatever the case is, um, maybe your time for a quote unquote relationship um it just hasn't hit you right and maybe maybe the things that you've learned will make it the future that much better i don't know i mean, i know i'm all over the map and like like always i'm all over the map but I, let me get into this and this is going to help me with the next question for you because this is from your page no in way. a toxic family <laughs> system Mm-hmm. The black sheep oh, yeah. is often just that. the person who sees through everyone's bullshit. Mm-hmm. I I have felt like that forever. Like I mm-hmm. see, I am the black sheep for sure, but I, I see through everybody's bullshit. And there's no doubt because everybody around me is the black sheep. That's why I post well, that. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's so real when you, when you shared that, I'm like, damn, that is my life because I see my brothers, I see my sisters, and I love them so much. And maybe I'm way wrong. Maybe I'm their way wrong. I don't know. And maybe I see the friends and the relationships, my my close friends, and I see their shit. And they think I'm the wild one or the crazy one. I don't know what I don't know what the hell is going on. I'm I'm out of control. Maybe I'm not the one that's out of control. I am. Maybe Here's I'm the one that's real I shit. You know, that's really what believe at. about that is that black sheep of the family is the one who's here to, to heal the lineage. You know, every family has traumas that have been passed down from generation to generation. You see the studies of, uh, of, of, you know, trauma can get passed down in your DNA. And I have to tell you a story. 
when I was like from as early as I can remember, four or five years old, I'd have this recurring bad dream where I'm walking along this field and I drop in a hole, right? Because the, the grass was a little grown up and I didn't see it and I, I fall in. And of course, you know, I sort of startle awake, like I jump and I'd wake up. Well, I'd get it from time to time. And then I got into middle school, I think, and it started happening more and more often until finally one night I went to bed and I had that stinking dream like three times in a row, like where I jump awake, go back to sleep, have the same dream, jump awake, go back to sleep, what, same dream. And, uh, middle school, I think okay. sixth grade, something like that. Right. And so now I'm irritated. I get up, I go in the living room. My dad's still up. And he's like, what are you doing up? And I tell him, oh, I have this dream. Like I've always had it. And I start explaining it to him. And he's like, oh, did it look like this over here? what? And did it look like that over there? And I'm like, hello, witch, get out of my head. You know, <laughs> like, what's going on? How do you know what my dream looks like? This is something that happened to him as a young child. Mm -hmm. It was an uncovered well. It had never been taken care of properly. He fell into it. And the only reason I'm here and he was here was because he was with his dog who ran and got help. Imagine how terrifying that is for a young child. And that trauma passed down to me through the DNA. I had never heard that story. I mean, I had been having those dreams since my earliest memories. And when we talked about it and he told me the story, do you know I never had that dream again? It cleared Why? it. It cleared Why? it. Why did it, why did it, clear? it allowed him to process it. We both processed it. It cleared, right? Everything is just energy. And so we both cleared it right there. And so there we healed that piece. And now it never went on to my children. So that's interesting. So then if, if you think about like other people's lives, the things, cause I, you know, I've got a bunch of weird ass dreams. I don't want to get into this episode, but they're weird as shit. Um, how do those, how do the energies pass on like when you say that your dad passed that that energy that that feeling that thought that memory mm -hmm. how did he pass that on to you oh you know what I'm, like I'm what does that look be able like to nerd out. yeah it, it, like there is actual articles and studies where it like becomes part of the dna that gets passed that you know when you oh, were conceived I <laughs> There it I is. agree with that. I agree with that because, you know, there's like, you know, when, when you get into the DNA of anybody, mm -hmm. it's um, how you process food, how you process stress, how you process mm -hmm. really mm -hmm. anything in your life. Yeah. And it, all, it all boils down to DNA, which is so interesting. and it's fascinating like a, a computer chip. That. Well, yeah. And, and that's why I think, you know, when we talk about like, you know, in regards to the show, if we can change the way we process things and, and I, and if we're present within our own selves, we, whatever we're going through in our lives, we don't have to pass that on to our children, mm -hmm. but we have to learn to be able to process that in our life that we have. And I think that's what you do for all your clients. And, and that's what, you know, we've talked about this a jillion times, but it's just so important to be able to have someone, you know, like, and trust, to be able to explain these situations that don't judge, that are real. Um, what do you do? I mean, I know you coach people one-on-one. -on -one. I, I, I know that, but, but what do you do for your clients? That like, like, tell me, because I've told you my life story tonight. Well, you, you've known my life story and you know all the things I struggle with because we've had kind of a bunch of crazy ass conversations. But, you know, now that I think about this, the change of subjects again, like I always do, but how long have I known you now? It's been four Is years, it four five, or five years? years, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Gosh, that's crazy. <laughs> four or five years. Yeah. That's a long ass time. But anyway, <laughs> what do you do for, for your clients? You remember me when I was young. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, yeah. I just want to remember you. I just don't want you to forget about me when you're making millions and millions of dollars. That's, that's all okay. I hope for. <laughs> well, what do you do for your clients? Like, 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 tell me a perfect client. And then what would you do mm. for that client? You know, and it's funny that you uh, 
that you talk about the worthiness and because that is honestly one of the really the starting pieces is upgrading that that worthiness factor it's it's really where everything stems from and you know i tend to work with women and um you know let's let's just talk about the fact that we live in a patriarchal society like that's how it's always been where we value the masculine energy the the masculine behavior take action rational thought you know go 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 and not the feminine you know the feminine has been belittled um you know uh old wives tale, mother's intuition, right? It's all silly. It doesn't make sense. You know, totally. It's not logical, but truly that is wisdom. That's, and you know, I know how you are, but um, I will get into spirituality a little bit <laughs> because, <laughs> because truly all of that intuition is your connection to the divine. And it's you getting downloads from your higher self, letting you know, like what is in your highest good or which way to go. And you know what, sometimes it might take you right into the fire. And that's because there's something to learn there. What does the download look like? mm, It just depends. It could be a thought. It could be a feeling. It could be an epiphany, you know, just, do you you know, when it happens, I mean, are you hypothetically, are you walking through the grocery store and it hits you? Honestly, when a, a great idea comes, and I'm like, wow, that was brilliant. Yeah, that wasn't me. <laughs> no, but usually, the, you know, the more connected you get to yourself, and that's, I start there, you know, even with just that physical piece of connecting with your body, starting to move in your body, how to be aligned in your body, because that is like the foundation of where we disconnect, right? We, we, we tough it out. We take a pill if it hurts. We, you know, we disconnect from our body and we're just constantly disconnecting from ourselves. If we're upset, just stuff it down. Sure. But for our health, for our, our true mental and physical health, we need to feel these things. Now, sometimes we're not ready to feel it all at once. And I, I talk about like the radio dial, turning things down and, and then you can turn it back up later when you're ready. But, um, ultimately you need to feel it. You need to feel to heal. Right. So just like that story with my dad, we, we both kind of felt the story and talked about it and sort of experienced that, like, oh my gosh, you know, how scary that would have been. And then as we both felt it, it healed it. It's, it just cleared it. One of the things I love about you is that your, I could tell you that I could tell you I'm, I was a, I was thinking about a bunch of terrible analogies, but they're not going to be appropriate for the show. But I can tell you anything that I want to tell you, and there's no judgment. There's just peace. There's love. There's acceptance. And I think that's what what makes you so unique and so powerful as a coach, as a guide. That that when people are out there, like I don't want to be, because like, I think one of the things that when people are, are scared to death to get a coach or quote unquote, a life coach or whatever your definition of that person is, I think most people are scared to death about the reaction they'll get from their coach or if they're actually truly authentic with them. And that's one of the things I've always respected most about you. Like you and I have been working together for years now. And I've always, I could tell you, Kalua, I did this and you wouldn't even hesitate. Like there's no question. And I think that's so refreshing um, because I think, again, most people, when they hire a coach, I think when for them to be truly authentic, to get to the next level, they hold back. They don't actually tell people mm-hmm. truly how they feel. So then you actually don't get anything truly out of the coaching experience if yes. you're not 100% authentic. And I think that's one of the things that separates you from so many people, because I literally, I could tell you anything. Like, and I mean that from the bottom of my heart, I can tell you my deepest, darkest secrets. And you know, most of them anyways, I say most of them, there's some other, <laughs> <laughs> but, but there's no judgment. And I think that's so refreshing. So for people out there listening around the world, I would tell you to reach out to Kalua. If you're, if you're hesitating, if you're concerned, if you've always wanted to hire that coach yet, you were worried about what they're going to think. Are they going to judge you? Clue is that person. She doesn't, she doesn't judge. So 
you know, I, I just love that about you. truly believe, right? So think about it. And again, I know you're not, you're, you're agnostic, but I'm going to get a little spiritual and At best. relate to that because I was raised by an agnostic man, came from Catholic yeah. people. I had to go through the whole, you know, judgments uh, you know, people against me because I wasn't this and I wasn't yeah. going to CCD and I'm going to Be hell. Better. And then, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. You're going <laughs> to hell for everything you do. And then, so then I got really turned off and then, and then I did come back and I, I got very spiritual and I, um, my biggest coming back out of that. And I still, I still, it's, it's a relationship. It's like any relationship you have your, your relationship with God source, whatever your divine, whatever you're saying, whoever your higher power is, it's a relationship. And, um, when I connect to that, when I'm in that, all I feel is love, you know, and, and that's really all it is. And, and so when you're, you're, you know, that perfect little being of light, that energy, not in a human form. You're, yeah, you're perfect there. The whole purpose of being in this human body is to have an experience. It's to learn, it's to grow, it's to be human, to be imperfect. So do it, <laughs> you know, be imperfect, experience. And, you know, the stop shaming yourself. And just because, Somebody else, honestly, I really feel like if other people are shaming you, if they're judging you, send them love. They're just working on yeah. their own stuff. They're just working on their own stuff. And, you know, they're, they're distracting themselves from their own stuff. I send you love and I'll be over here being human. You know? Isn't that crazy? Like it's, it's so, it's so funny that you say just send love because we were so quick to judge and we're so quick to compare ourselves to someone else and get get into the arguments about we're right they're wrong all this other bullshit which it's just not the way to go it it's not the way to go at it so it's it's it, it gets frustrating for sure well and that's that's our dichotomy right versus wrong good versus evil black versus white where really everything is just gray you know well, and, and the no more time we either. spend in the gray the less fighting the less you know the more harmony 100% correct. Uh, Kalua, I love you to death. Uh, tell everybody where they can find you around the world. Uh, let's see. You can learn more about my program at mycrave.club. Mycrave.club. Yes. Yes. To uh, have the life you crave because you deserve it. You hear me? Jeremy, are you hearing me? Oh, I hear you. I hear you, <laughs> okay. sister. There's no question about that. <laughs> mycrave.club. That's an interesting uh, web address. Mm -hmm. That's pretty smart. I like I like the way that sounds. It's got a good ring to it. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Take your fire, but continue. No, that's all right. No, it. Um, you know, I, there's more information about what I do there, and and just really helping women connect with their worthiness, with their divine feminine power, and. Again, when I talk about divine feminine power, I'm talking about women stepping into you know, what they haven't been able to for a long time, because we've been taught the masculine way to do things. And you're seeing more and more women burnt out because they're not built for that. And here's the other thing, you know, men have some femininity in them too, just like women have some masculinity. That's for sure. So until we heal that, you know, it, it's hurting the men as well, not just the women, right? Everybody is affected. We need to have that balance, that, that marriage, that blend of the two energies, and then we heal. So I, I truly believe, you know, I think my purpose is helping women be the queens they are meant to be, and then they help the kings around them, right? <laughs> well, that's well put. And um, again, I, I love you for it. I love everything you do. So what was the website again? Mycrave.club. Mycrave.club. Please follow Kalua everywhere. And, and you can find her on social media, on Facebook, yep. Instagram, all that other good stuff. You can find her through my friends too. So if, make sure you connect with me, obviously, on, on, on everything. And uh, you can just search my friends. My friends are wide open. You can find Kalua there. That's easy too. Um, but find her on YouTube as well. You're on YouTube, oh, yeah. right? Yes, I am. That's right. Killing, killing YouTube. <laughs> What's your, any idea how to find you on YouTube? Because there's no like actual address on YouTube. Is I think it's, it, it should just be my name. Kalua Ruit Galakar. Kalua Ruit Galakar. Yes. It's got a great ring to it. 
<laughs> Chloe, you're the best. I love you for, for I love you forever, and you mean so much Thank to me you, and my life. Too. And uh, you made a big impact on me and my family. And I, I'm such a big fan. So everybody out there around the world, if you, if you gosh, I mean, like like I just explained about two minutes ago, like, or five minutes ago, if you're wanting that person to actually respond to and and and, and accept you for where you're at in your life. It doesn't matter about where you're going or where you've been. It's about where you're at. And I think that's so important to understand that if you're looking for that person to accept you where you are currently at this day, at this second, Kalu is the one. And she can absolutely 100% change your life and make a big difference. So I love her. Um, I mean, I'm, I, I, I've said this a million times on the show. I, I, I actually truly love her to death. She is so important to me in my life. And I would think I think you should reach out to her and, and learn more about her. Um, follow me, Jeremy, jeremytod.com, email me, all that good stuff. Leave those five-star reviews. Follow me on YouTube, which is kind of cool. I have uh, 200, and my goal of, of 1,000 last July is long gone, <laughs> but I'm at 230 some people following me now, which is all good in the hood. And I appreciate it, all 230 people. And I say it in every single episode, I mean from the bottom of my heart. You've got greatness within, like always, this is the positive side.